How's it going guys? Matt here with Code Tech Tutorials. Today we're going to be looking at a little sample of a skill tree as requested. And well, the hardest part about this for me is just coming up with a design. Basically, I can uh, I could spend days, years even, hypothesizing skill tree designs. And this really has nothing to do with coding. So the big mental sink for me is just coming up with a design. So without any design, we're just going to make up something. So I've got this little notepad here. Let's come up with uh, some th theoretical design and keep it super simple. Uh, let's say we're playing a, let's say we're playing a game. And in this game, you do some sword fighting. So you have swords. All right, we're going to keep it that simple. How would we do this? We could say we need points and you need to put at least one point into each. Uh, obviously you can't take both of these. You have to take one direction or the other. That's kind of the point of the tree, but this should be enough to give us an example to code up. One, two, three, four. We're gonna work with four points and allow you to go down this tree with those four points. So uh, four points to spend on tree. Uh, now, of course, you might have a leveling system or something like that that gives you a point when you level up or however you want to do it. Totally up to you. It's funny how teach me how to code basically just turns into design something that has nothing to do with code. I don't care how you design your stuff. That has nothing to do with coding, really. You design it how you like it and how you want it. And uh, I could show you how to code it, but do I really need to design everyone's program for them? No nor do I want to. That sounds miserable. All right, so with that in mind, let's make some structs. So so we'll make a skill tree, or we'll make a sword skills tree. There's several different ways you can do this. There's probably a good way to use like a, a balanced tree to do this, but that's going to be a little rough around the edges, so or hard to visualize rather. So we're going to do it in more of a cascading way. So first of all, we need all these possible skills in a struct. Now, there's a couple ways I can think of doing this. We could brute force it and we could just have all of them available and then we could have some sort of controller that only allows you to take the proper one. Yeah, that's probably the way I would do it off the top of my head. And there might be another way to do it where, yeah, I guess for this simple of example, brute force is probably fine. So if you get, if you pick a uh, sword skills or sword specialization, we could say that this is a form of a uh, skill tree. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's make another struct called skill tree. And this is basically just going to interface and we're just going to make a void gain skill equals zero. Let's make this virtual. Let's put a destructor in here. Not going to worry too much about following too many rules. We're really just going to get this done in a bare minimum type fashion. So eventually we're going to have another struct. Let's just call this our player character. Or swordsman rather. Let's just call it swordsman. And swordsman is going to have a field, private field, called skill tree. And we're going to make this a pointer. And we'll say chosen skill tree. So basically what this means is this could be null which will mean they haven't spent any points. Or if it's filled out, you could pick a different skill tree to go down, but you can only choose one. As you can see, there's only one thing here, but it could be potentially set back to null and reset. And we can all, we also probably want to have points available. Uh, so we'll do that, or skill points rather. So with a potential number of skill points and that sort of thing, we can also have a, let's do a level up function. I'm going to make this private because this is going to be called internally when you get uh, another experience or something along those lines. And I think we're just going to inline all these definitions. That way we don't have to re say everything twice. All right. So on a level up, your skill points goes up. And what else happens? Uh, you get to uh, choose skill. So let's make another function called choose skill. And this function might be a little bit bigger because it's basically going to prompt based on your skill points. And we'll also have int uh, points spent. Now all of these are going to default to zero. So let's just put that right in here. And this can start as null. Now we have to decide, are we going to force the person to choose a skill when they level up? Or do we want to wait until they say, okay, I'm ready to level. Let me choose my stuff. I think I'm just going to force them right off here with choose, just call choose skill. And this choose skill is going to do most of the cascading type function here. And it's going to be based off of uh, this, this skill tree. But we should also be able to delegate some of this stuff 
to this function here. Like when you go to choose a skill, it should be able to look at the tree that's instantiated and maybe do some stuff here. So you can kind of decide where you want to uh, do the work, if you will. Maybe we'll, instead of choose skill, we'll call this spend points or spend point. Trying to make design decisions on the fly here with more stuff. Now, this is where things could get a little bit tricky because, well, basically you just have to make a lot of design decisions. The majority of this is design decisions, not actual coding. So it's more of getting a proper flow chart and deciding how you want things to go. Um, once that's all deciding, decided, you can kind of massage the code to get it to work. Of course, good coding skills help here, but I'm, I'm pretty well convinced that Coding is like 99% design and 1% actually knowing how to code. So you don't necessarily even need coding skill to code theoretically. You just need to be able to come up with stuff that you want to put into code. At least that's how it is for me because, sure, I could type code all day, but it needs to actually do something proper or have a point. So that's where the design comes in. And I think a lot of people, especially new coders, kind of miss that point. So as a swordsman, you're also going to probably have some skills. I think we're just going to have like a damage stat and we're going to assume you have a basic weapon because obviously this could get very quickly get into equipment and all that stuff. We'll start as damage zero or maybe damage one and that can increase as they level stuff up. We'll just call that end. So let's have an attack function here and we'll have to decide what the attack function does. And ultimately it's going to prompt based on uh, the potential attacks you have. And some of those are going to become available uh, from this sword special. So the logic in here is going to get a little complicated pretty quickly, but that's okay. All right. So let's say we get to this spend point method and we basically just want to go uh, skill tree, chosen skill tree, gain skill. And that's going to run this method and we need to implement it for each skill tree. And this is going to allow us to make multiple skill trees. Like for example, we could have an axe one later and you could set that as the one and have that be the gain skill. So we're only having one, not only just the sword special for simplicity's sake. And we just need to design this gain skill uh, based around our little chart. Now here is our chart. Once again, um, it's assumed that I'm kind of assuming here that you get the sword specialization automatically like uh, sure it might count as a point as the first point but also you kind of are forced to choose it if you go in this tree like you got to spend your first point there so we're gonna have like uh some booleans here we're gonna have bull um plus damage bull uh power attack double strike and and weapon block and on the other side of the tree we have accuracy Stable strike, fast attack, and quick swap. Some hypotheticals here. Now we want these all to start out as false, so we need to make sure that these are all false. Uh, I'm just going to do it in this way. There might be a cleaner way of doing it, but I feel like this is pretty clear that they all start as false. And now we're going to need some little helper functions in here as well. And of course, a gain skill overridden to set all this stuff. Uh, we could even go as far as to make these private so that people can't just change them at will. But, you know, it's already private in the swordsman, so maybe that's good enough. Uh, we don't want to over engineer this too much. So let's implement this gain skill. Put the override keyword in there, and then this is where some complicated logic is going to start to lie. Because it's assumed. Okay, you either have to choose plus damage or accuracy. You can't have both because that's the way the tree goes. You either go left or you go right. You can't go both directions. That's kind of the point here, at least in, in this case of the way we're designed. Maybe yours will allow you to go down both sides of the tree. That's fine if you want to do that. A lot of, a lot of games do that for stuff. You just have to make sure you meet the prerequisites. So uh, we could probably go ahead and, you know, the spin point is a little bit redundant. We could just get rid of it and put that right there because this is, I think it's only going to stay a single line of just uh, calling this gain skill. But also we need to make sure that a skill tree is actually chosen. So that's actually kind of important. So let's put a little quick if here and say if um, 
not chosen skill tree, so if it's not filled out, still null, then we'll just basically force the user to pick one. Um, but we know right now that there's no choice. Uh, so normally we'd have a branch here and have, you know, prompt for some user input. Maybe they got to click a button and choose a side or something like that. But in our case, we're just going to say, you know, there's only one choice. So you're going to have a uh, sword special specialization choice. And we're just going to fill it out and say chosen skill tree equals new sword specialization. So just want to reiterate that if you have multiple, this is the point where you'd say, if you haven't chosen a tree yet, you need to choose a tree and then you can continue. And it's going to be the same with this. If you know, you actually have to have a skill tree chosen to gain a skill. So in our case, this second if is a little redundant because it's kind of being forced instantiated anyway, but we basically just want to make sure we're not doing some null reference. So it's just good practice to set something like that up to begin with. Now I'm getting to the point where I'm starting to think about experience points and how the leveling is going to work. And it, uh, it really gets over complicated very quick. Um, we can just, we're just going to assume if we make an attack, all right, let's just assume if we make an attack at the end of that attack, we are going to level up. All right, because we're going to simplify it here. Uh, normally you would maybe, you know, there's a bunch of the whole combat system to work out here too, or a whole experience system to work out or whatever you decide to do for your game or whatever you're programming. And I would be here an extra four hours designing that. And it's not even important to the example. We just need to actually level up. So we're going to have some attack logic first logic and choices. And then at the end of that, we'll assume we won the battle or whatever, and we're leveling up. So every, we just need a way to basically go through our program and uh, be leveling up and choose new skills for sake of example. So this should take care of it. We will fill out the attack logic and choices here shortly, but we got to see what's going on here first in order to do that. So we can assume that your first attack, say if there's no chosen skill tree, or well, I guess we can do it the opposite way. If there is a skill tree, then we're going to have some additional options. Otherwise, We'll just do uh, a basic attack and we'll fix this logic up later if we need to. And we'll put just a uh, we'll see out here for level up. And don't worry, we'll get to the, the game loop here down in the main later. But first, we need to kind of work out this system at least a little bit. And so far, we're doing so good. So let's hypothesize a little bit. How are we going to use this swordsman? Well, at some point, we're going to instantiate. At some point, we're going to do an attack. And then after that attack, uh, well, we're going to go through this and that's going to start it all. Basically, it's just going through this attack because we're just assuming you have to attack to level up in our very naive example. All right, so let's work through this level up. You get a skill point and uh, if you haven't chosen a skill tree yet, you're automatically going to become a swordsman and then you're going to gain a skill. Now we have to kind of consider um, skill points. So we'll, we'll have to say... We'll have to do something with how many skill points you have and how many points you've spent. So basically, what we want to do here is we want to say if points spent is less than the number that you have, skill points, that's when you would gain a skill. If you've already spent them all, you're not going to gain any more skills. So based on this, we need to uh, very carefully analyze this. Now, our max, we have a maximum. We have max skill points. And right now, that's four. That's just based on our naive design. Obviously, that's going to that's gonna change a lot. So we can have, uh, or we can say, you know, maybe this should actually go somewhere else. Because what if later we get higher levels and we go down other trees? I don't know. You decide how you want to do that dynamically. Uh, but maybe we'll actually put that in this sword special. Max skill points four. And this one we might actually want private. And we'll do it const. So this is going to be basically hard-coded in here. That you can only put four points in this tree. Uh, let's go ahead and make it private. So we will be referencing these max skill points a little later, uh, specifically in this gain skill, uh, to make sure that they haven't spent too many. But anytime you level up, you're going to get a new skill point. So eventually you'll go over more than four skill points. But in any case, you're still going to only be allowed to put four into this tree. So hopefully that makes sense. That just basically allows us to expand later and add more skills into the tree or add other skill trees. There are some way to spend your points, uh, but in our case, we're only allowing you to spend this four in the swordsman tree in uh, this naive example. And we're also going to do another thing here. Well, when you first choose the new skill tree, when you first go into this tree, 
uh, we're going to say you spent a point going into that tree. So there we go. So that should set it the very first time to uh, one skill point and one point spent. But later, when this gets skipped because you've already got the tree, like uh, for example on the second level, your skill points is going to go to two and your skill points spent is still going to be one. So you just got to kind of consider these options. And in that case, we're going to be in this block and the point spent is going to be less than the skill points. So we'll go to gain skill. And we will also uh, be doing a few other things like we need to consider the max skill points here. Uh, that's that's maybe a little weird uh, because, well, it's hard coded in the gain skill. So are we going to call this anyway and then just reject? I think so. I think in our case, we'll just we'll just put a return. We'll put like if um, I guess we got to kind of decide where we're going to put this. Yeah, we're going to change some things here briefly. Um, but I think we'll go something along the lines of, uh, yeah, I guess we just need points spent into this tree as well. So we'll just make that private points into tree. And we'll just start that out as zero. But after you gain a skill, uh, at the very end, you're going to go points into tree plus plus. Right? And uh, at the very beginning of this, we want to make sure that uh, they're not maxed out. So right off the bat, we'll just go if uh, points in the tree is greater than or equal to the max skill points we can't do anything here we'll just return so basically if you try to gain a skill when you've already maxed out this tree it's just going to return and not do anything otherwise we want to learn some abilities uh, via player choice if there is a choice and then uh update this points in the tree so there might be a few flaws in this design as i'm definitely just doing it somewhat off the top of my head uh, but we'll try to address as many of those as we can in the allotted time but for now let's just continue with the example so let's say all right we're we're playing the game we're attacking we're leveling up and we're gaining skills so far so good it's uh it's really it's really not too bad we just need to make sure this point spent works properly um let's see if the point spent is less than the skill points, we gain a skill. If we successfully gain a skill, we need to uptick the point spent. So let's say this gain skill returns a bull. Returns true. Returns true if point spent successfully. Now, this should actually help a lot because uh, we could actually save up points because we could, in theory, have an option here that says don't spend. And it'll just back out of the function. And next time you go to level up, you'll have two skill points. So I don't know. Uh, optionally, we can do something like that. But now we want to make sure that if we fail to spend, we return false. And that if we succeed in spending, we return true. So we'll just do that at the end like so. This type of function with multiple returns might go against some kind of standard. Some, some standards say, or you know, some organizations will say you can only have one return statement in your function just for clarity. Uh, we're going to have a bunch in ours. So your organization might be uh, strictly against the source setup, but you can adjust if needed and uh, reason about it however you need to. But we're going to keep going. And that's just going to allow us here to um, go if, so if this returns true and they spent the point, we'll go point spent plus plus. And if they didn't, it's just going to fall through and the point spent will not go up. And I think we're getting close to about everything we need here. So let's just start filling out some logic. We're going to forget about this attack for just a moment and just look at this gain skill ability. Now, you could say, yeah, this logic's going to get a little bit complicated very quickly. But as you can see, um, we basically have a tier one, a tier two, and a tier three. So we could break it up a little bit based on that. All right, because we got, we have some things here like damage or accuracy. That's in tier one. You can't have them both. So in order to say we can't have them both, we could take this damage, uh, this plus damage here, and this accuracy here, and combine them together into something like an enum. We could have enum, uh, tier one and tier one could either be plus damage or we'll rename this plus accuracy so now your tier one is going to be one or the other but it can't be both and it could also be unspent all right so either tier one's unspent has plus damage or plus accuracy all right and we can do a similar thing for tier two it's either power attack or stable strike all right so i'm just going to copy this line down 
change it to tier two, change that to tier two, and put in here power attack or stable strike. And now we can delete these here. And we also do the same thing for the tier three or the final one. We now have four choices. Uh, so we could make a tier three that has four choices. Start the first one as unspent and the rest are gonna be all these options. But one of the most important things here is to design it in a way where you cannot have error. You want it to be logically impossible to bug this out. Now this is something super critical and that like most games get wrong. The sheer number of bugs in games often comes from just faulty logic. Like they're just, they just might have something in the code where if you go in a specific order, you can magically get some tier three ability without spending tier one and tier two first. We want that to be impossible. Now, you could still do it with cheats, of course, because you could go, you know, you could open the binary and change the memory, but that's illegal. That's using hacks. So, you know, that's, it's always going to be possible to change the memory, but not natively. Someone would have to be hacking or, you know, diving into the memory and changing stuff, not through the normal program operation. So what I'm talking about here is normal program operation. That's the one that should be designed in a way where it can't have logical fallacy. Now, people are going to hack games. There's nothing you can do about it. People are going to like mess your stuff up via that method, but it's, uh, it's not legal. And, you know, they'll get disqualified from speed runs and whatever for doing that and called out and shame. Who knows? You know, watch uh, Carl Jopp's channel about <laughs> that stuff if you're interested in how uh, people who try to cheat in speed runs and hack stuff eventually get caught, you know. So we're, we're going to kind of ignore that factor is the point I'm getting to. But based on this, now we don't have a bunch of Booleans. Now we have kind of somewhat of a tiered system already. So that is sort of nice. I think this might complain about something. Uh, we'll see if we'll get some compiler warnings we need to correct. But I'm not sure if we're allowed to use the same keyword in all three of these. I think we can if we go enum class. But also you can see that these tiers are specifically designed within Sword Special. They're not outside of it. So no one's going to have easy access to these. Uh, we're basically only going to use it within this function. All right, and we're going to use it within our learn ability choice. And this, this is going to get a little bit messy. But if you followed this long, you should be able to reason about the last of this too. So first of all, we're going to assume the first point is automatic. Um, if you, uh, the first time you instantiate this thing, you're spending a point. And points in the tree should be one. So actually you're automatically one point into the tree if you have the tree at all, just, just based on the design. Cause you automatically, you know, if you're setting up to sword specialization, you're spending that point there. Then your next point is the one that's gonna start to matter as far as making choices. So that's what would go here. And we can go off of points into tree to see what tier they're on. Um, actually let's reverse this a little bit. It's just gonna make the logic a little confusing. Points into tree, uh, or maybe we could call this at tier, um, because, you know, since the first one's automatic, we don't really need to, uh, and we don't really need to logic that. We can just kind of skip over the logic of that. And in that way, max go points is three because three tiers. Uh, so we'll call this tiers, uh, into tree. And that's going to make a little bit more sense when we're, uh, reading out our logic. So we'll say if tiers into tree is less than, well, let's see here. Let me think about this. I guess we just actually need to switch. We can just make a switch statement here. Switch on tiers into tree. And we just need to put all the cases that we handle here. Case one. So if you're at tier one, case two, let's make sure we put breaks in these. Um, I've been liking to do my switch statements like this. Make a scope, break at the end of it. Case three, make a scope, break at the end of it. Now, we don't necessarily need a scope. Depends on what you're doing. And default, we're going to do nothing. Well, I think if we do a fall through case, eh, there won't be any fall through. It's going to be logically impossible. So we're assuming if we get here, we're going to force some choice. And then we're going to plus plus the tiers into tree. I guess these would be actually one less if we think about it. If you're at tier zero, you're going to gain level one stuff. If you're at tier one, you're going to gain the level two stuff because basically you're going up to the next tier. So we want to assume that you're not there yet before you, you gain the skill, if that makes sense. Because once we get this, once this plus is to three, there's nothing else to do. We're maxed out in the tree. 
All right, so let's think about case zero. Uh, the first time you level up, you're, you can either take damage or accuracy. So we want to make that choice here. All right, so we'll say, uh, let's just put a C out here. So let's make a let's make a little choice character here. Or well, I'm doing it backwards. Character called Choice started out as null, I guess, or just a zero. It doesn't matter really. It just needs to be some kind of invalid option. Maybe we'll make it a new line character. I don't know. We'll figure that out later if we need to. All right, but now we need to say um, choose a skill. So if we're going into this, we're definitely going to be saying choose a skill. So let's just preempt that. Choose a place, place to spend skill point, and which skill point is it? Well, it's basically going to be this number uh, plus one. So this should say, for example, when tears into tree is zero, which will be the very first time, it's going to say choose a place to spend skill point one. And that's where you're going to choose uh, which tier one, damage or accuracy. So we'll go uh, damage plus, uh, okay, so we assume, you know, this is going to already be in, in the console here. Uh, we just need to prompt the op options here. So we'll say like, uh, press D for damage. And we can also have in here A for accuracy. I have to look up whether I'm spelling accuracy correctly. It only has one R. Okay, good. So I've been spelling it wrong. All right, so we're basically going to get this that prompt there. Choose place, spin skill, D or A. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go uh, CN, choice. And assume that they put in a valid option. So we need to, once again, have another little if statement. If uh, choice equals D, then we need to say year one is now equal to plus damage. Else if choice equals A, tier 1 equals plus accuracy. And then we want to be able to, we want to be sure to eat the new line character. This CN uh, is not going to, it's basically going to sit here and do nothing unless we go um, CN.ignore. We'll say 100. It's kind of a hack. Basically, this just eats the new line out of the console so that the program actually continues. Uh, but also, we want to consider what if they press the wrong buttons? What if they press invalid stuff? What if they just enter a bunch of junk? That's something to, something that people can always do. And uh, this gets into a little bit of the console logic. We're going to kind of shortcut it with this C and ignore. But just keep in mind that if they enter more than 100 characters of junk, that you're going to get weird stuff happening that doesn't make any sense. So more likely uh, what's going to happen for you is you have some sort of interface and they click a button and you don't have to worry about the cn.ignore stuff in the console so much. But when you're pulling in stuff from the console, um, CN, I believe CN doesn't actually eat the new line. It just, it stops either at a space or a new line. So at some point, you got to like uh, get rid of some of that stuff in the console. And that's what the CN is for. Now we also want to say, what if they made an invalid choice? And I mean, we're not really going to handle that. But basically, you would want to do a loop. Uh, so you want to do like while uh, choice is not equal to D and choice or choice is not equal to A. So if they've made a wrong choice, we continue and we do it all again. That might not make a ton of sense to you right now, but basically if they put in wrong data and they don't get either of these, we don't want to like accidentally skill the, spend the skill point and give them nothing. We want to loop back and say, try again basically. So this might actually work a little better this way. And now in theory, as of right now, we should be able to gain these new skills. So let's just put a little console out here just to verbalize it and see if it actually works. Uh, plus damage chosen for tier one. That's just so we get some visualization in the command line. And we'll say plus accuracy on this one. We probably want another prompt here that just shows the user we're waiting for them with something like this. And that way they get this is the last thing and then their cursor will be blinking after this choice. And they, that kind of tells them that we're waiting for it. All right, so maybe we go ahead and give this initial thing a test. All right, so let's uh, go down to our main and just start out. Let's, let's go ahead and we'll instantiate a uh, swordsman. Uh, 
We'll just call it our player, and we'll go our player dot attack. And we know what that's going to do as of right now. As of right now, when we call attack, um, first of all, it's going to see if they've got a skill tree. If not, it's just going to say basic attack if they don't have a skill tree, and then it's going to level up. And when it levels up, it's going to say level up. We don't have a skill tree yet. It's going to automatically spend our first point into a uh, sword special and spend a point there. Notice that the skill points are not aligned the same in these trees as they are in the swordsman. That's intended. Uh, it's just the way it's going to kind of work in our system. But from there, so first of all, we should just get sword spec chosen. Uh, if we attack again, uh, we shouldn't get really anything here. We should say, well, let's say sword attack just to show something. And then we'll level up again here. But this time, it's going to call gain skill. Because it's, we already have a skill tree, our points are going to be misaligned where we have uh, less where we have more skill points than points spent. And so we're gonna have a point to spend, so that should kick in there. And, you know, we don't, we haven't programmed in a reject option yet, so this should definitely always return true as long as uh, we're not getting this first case where it's false. But let's give it a check. Let's just see if it actually works. So we're gonna to go to this and build for the first time. Let's see if we get a successful compile. We do have an error, just some kind of syntax error. Uh, I think we just need a, semicolon there of some sort we'll put a break yep all right and here we go it flies through it says basic attack level up sword spec chosen and then on our second attack sword attack level up choose a place to spend skill point one damage or accuracy let's say let's put in some junk data to start we'll say i which makes no sense right so it should loop back and say damage or accuracy you know, we put in something valid okay we'll finally say damage and it'll say plus damage chosen for tier one. And now we can see it still loops out of this, or it still loops again, and uh, doesn't seem to actually, oh, we need and. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> okay, which a nice catch there on the static analysis that actually underlined it. But if the choice is not D and not A, then it's wrong. So that's why it did that. So let's stop this and give it another try and just make sure it does what we expect. Let's choose damage here, and there we go. Plus damage chosen for tier one. The program exits because in our main we have literally nothing after that, so that's what's going to happen. But as you can see, this first skill point being chosen actually works for tier one. Now it's uh, not actually doing anything for our player yet, uh, but we should, in theory, let's say let's make another, let's make damage and accuracy here. We'll start them both as one. And we can plus the damage if they choose damage, and we can plus the accuracy if they choose accuracy. So how are we going to do that? That's that's going to get a little bit trickier here because we need to return something that either tells us what to do or we need to be passing in this swordsman so that it can be modified. And, uh, you know, we could also pass in some special return struct and or maybe some command or something like that. But for sake of example here, I'm going to just pass in on this... Uh, gain skill, we're going to pass in this entire swordsman so that it can be edited. So let's go back up to gain skill here. Um, still swordsman. You know, this should probably have an interface in front of it called player or something so that we can just pass in player. That's going to make it more modular later. Uh, sure, I guess we'll do that real quick. Let's go struct player and we'll just go virtual void. Uh, I feel like this might accidentally complicate it, but this sort of thing will be required if you have a bunch of different skill trees because it's not necessarily always going to pass in a swordsman, right? You might have some other kind of thing. So let's just change this from swordsman to player instead, just for, you know, just so that it reads better, basically, so that we know it's a player. All right, so this gain skill wants to take in a player by reference. So we just go player. We could do it also by pointer. Um, but we're going to do it by reference in this case, player. Now, we run into a little bit of an error here, because at the point of um, instantiating this skill tree, the program no doesn't currently know what player is. So, in fact, we are actually going to have to make this a pointer, and we're going to have to forward declare player. So basically, this just says, hey, expect a... Um, well, we're using structs here, we're not using classes. Expect, expect a struct of type player. So later, I guess, uh, 
yeah, we need to decide some things here. I guess we'll have this. Just got to carefully think about the order of how things are declared here. Doesn't know about the player yet. Um, I guess we would forward declare the skill tree actually struct skill tree and put all of this uh, before or after the player. Hold on, I'm kind of boggling my own brain here trying to think about this. Give me a sec. Okay, let's just fix everything we can here first. Uh, let's make sure we get all these sorted out. And when we call gain skill and we pass it to player, since we're in the player class or struct, we just pass it this, which is a pointer to the class. Now, the problem comes in here is right here when we try to instantiate it, but it doesn't know what player is yet. I think we need to forward declare player, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, that is correct. We need to forward declare player uh, because we have these pointers here. And since it's a pointers, we, pointer, we don't need the full definition yet. It's going to figure that out later. This basically says expect this uh, pointer type player to be valid and defined somewhere, which it is down below. But now what we can do here is if they choose the plus damage, we can go player damage we'll just up the damage just directly like that and we can do the same thing for accuracy okay so one one thing i'm kind of skipping here is well this is maybe a little dangerous you know we're passing player n to the entire skill tree and we're letting skill tree do whatever we want with the player a little bit dangerous but i'm just going to leave it like that and you can improve it if you want because what would be a better idea is probably to have these be private in the struct and just have a function that says like um add damage or, or plus up damage and basically to have it under some sort of control and not just wide open to a a, a skill tree because a skill tree could just say if it wants uh let's set damage um equal to one million <laughs> and it would just accept it so we could put some barricades around that with some some kind of setter or you know you probably get the point here but for sake of example, we're going to keep it as simple as possible. And, uh, you know, passing it in is fine enough. We know that our particular tree is uh, valid enough. All right, so that takes care of tier one. So what happens if we gain another skill point? Well, in that case, uh, we've already got one skill point. We're going to go up to the next one, and that should work. So, all right, once they get into this skill tree, they absolutely have to choose one. There's no way out of this until they choose one. And once they do that, the tiers in the tree is going to plus plus. That's designed that way on purpose. We don't really have a way to save the level ups for later. You can do that if you want, but we're skipping that logic here. All right. So let's now consider, you know, we got more damage. Um, we'll say, let's see, basic attack here, sword attack. Uh, we can put the damage in accuracy. Let's put the damage in accuracy in here because we kind of want to know. Uh, I'll just put it like a, a D for damage and we'll just kind of make sure it build that out correctly and then we'll put an a for accuracy so that way we should see these numbers as we go there we go let's hit play again and see if that shows better undefined type player even though it just worked a second ago okay um just gonna be out with this i I'll, i will go the entire rest of my life and not understand why it suddenly has a compiler error now and it didn't before because this just worked and now after I don't know, changing a random C out down here, it doesn't. Okay, but ultimately the problem here is what well, we're trying to call from a pointer player and trying to call something from within it. Um, and, you know, it worked. I'm not sure. I guess I'd have to go watch the video, but maybe I wasn't calling anything about the player before when I compiled before. But it only knows about it in theory. It knows that it exists. It doesn't know anything about what it does at this point. So we have to, and this is this is all because we're trying to define things above the main. Uh, we can solve this problem very quickly by going, uh, we can just forward declare all of these like so, or just put them all in different headers. I guess the skill tree one can stay up here since it's a interface, but everything else needs to know, needs to be defined down below or in a, a non-header type fashion. So like down here, this gets a little more simplified with multiple files and proper includes, but let's see if this is happening. Nope. Still the same thing. Uh, ultimately doesn't know what player is at this point. Let's go ahead and get this fixed.
Okay, so this is often where people get stuck in C++ when they get an error like this and they don't really know how to restructure things to make it uh, do what it's supposed to do. We just want to access the player that we're passing in and we just want to up the damage. Seems simple enough. Now, I'm not entirely sure why it didn't have an error before. I think the reason was is because it was optimized away because we weren't even using damage and accuracy anywhere. So it just didn't care and due to optimizations, it uh, took care of it. I think not even hundred percent sure, but now that we're using these somewhere, they definitely need to uh, actually work properly. And when we're passing them in here, well, player's not defined yet. It knows that hey, there's a struct called player, but it doesn't know anything about it at this point. So we can't just like call stuff. So there's a couple different ways we could fix this. And the easiest way is probably to, instead of, um, passing in a player is to pass in some sort of command. Well, I don't want to make this over complicated. So I think what we're end going to end up doing here is just not passing in player at all. Uh, while we could, and it's a somewhat valid option, it's going to make this a little more confusing. So let's just get rid of passing in player. Everything else is going to stay the same. Uh, let's get rid of, because we have yeah, you know, kind of as I spoke about before, we don't necessarily want this skill tree to be modifying the player necessarily. Uh, so ultimately, you know, the player, they've got access to the skill tree, so it could be checked. And that's probably what we want to do ultimately, is we want to just base it off of off of that. So we're just going to have to add in a little bit more stuff in here. We know that, you know, the sword attack damage is going to be damage, and then it's going to be like plus skill damage basically and if we check our skill tree um yeah we're basically going to need more logic in here if we check our skill tree we should be able to get damage and accuracy added from that as well is the point so you might ask okay how do you do that well we need to take a look at this sword special and that's part of the skill tree and see if we have either of these set. And while we're at it, another thing we probably want to do is in this loop, rather than going off this choice, we just want to see if tier one is equal to unspent. If it's unspent, um, we do a little comparison here. That's when we know we need to keep asking because I didn't spend the point yet. So that's just going to be a little bit of a uh, optimization there. And uh, also we need to make sure that these just start out as they're supposed to be. So this should be tier one unspent and the rest of these kind of the same except for their tier because we're going to have similar logic for those later and now this function of attack is going to get a little more confusing now it's already kind of a hack basically a hack job but basically rather than just taking this raw damage let's actually make these private so we don't even have access to them damage and accuracy we want to uh, get like you know we, obviously we have support for leveling up into uh Fix that real quick. We have support for leveling up into the sword. So basically we want some kind of like get damage function that will get everything we expect. So we could put that privately in here and just do a uh, and get damage. Now the only thing that can call damage is this attack and we'll do a similar thing for get accuracy. Similar thing here, get accuracy. There might be a smarter way of doing this. You're welcome to let me know or just modify the repo and make a pull request. That's all good, but okay, so get damage. It's obviously gonna return the damage plus whatever we have from skills. So we have to consider what do we have? What do we potentially have from skills? Well, we already know about the sword special struct, um, but we don't necessarily know what this skill tree is set as. So we have to do, well, I guess in this case, we have to do some casting, which is a little bit slow and not always recommended, but if you gotta do it, you gotta do it. So we basically would go, let's see, let's instantiate a variable here or a sword special spec let's just see if we can cast this chosen skill tree to a sword special so we go standard well what is this dynamic cast into sword special pointer this needs to be a pointer too we just try to cast it into that and see if their chosen skill tree is sword special if so well let's do get sword damage and get sword accuracy let's make these a little more specific since we're you know now I'm thinking about it, it might be better to do the cast here and check, but I don't know, this is a, still very nice. So it is what it is. But we could basically say if the skill tree is set, if, if the spec exists, because this will be null if the cast uh, failed, uh, will be null if cast failed. So if, if there is a spec, 
Um, let's return. Um, so let's see, what are we looking at here again? We want to see if tier one is set to plus damage, basically. Return. Uh, I guess we can put this all in one line. Damage plus, uh, well, let's not make it too complicated. Let's simplify the logic a little bit here. So let's make a variable and, well, we know, we already know we're going to get this damage. We don't need to do anything about that. But we need to know whether we're getting the bonus damage from this plus damage or not. So the way we do that is we go, um, if spec, um, well, then we can check specialization. If spec uh, tier one and see if it's equal to this plus damage, tier one plus damage. We also need to scope this into sword special. That's where we're getting that enum that first declared. So if it's plus damage, we're going to return damage plus one. I spelled this wrong. Yes, I did. Okay. So if they have the sword specialization, uh, well, it's not return yet. This is, we're making this a little more confusing than we need to. Let's first of all, let's just write up here. Let's just go and total damage. And let's just start it out as the actual damage because maybe the things later will increase that. So let's just start it out as the damage, uh, but let's make sure we plus it up if this is case is true. Total damage plus equals, we'll just say one, one's fine. So there we go. Uh, when we go to get damage, well, we're gonna start with the normal damage. Then we're gonna check if they have the sword specialization. And if they do, we're gonna see if they've got the plus damage. And if we, if they do, uh, we add some damage to total damage. We're just gonna return total damage. It should be pretty infallible because if they don't have this specialization, this entire block will get skipped and then just return here. Now we gotta be a little careful here because we could be leaking memory. If they do have the specialization, we are filling out a pointer and that is going to basically leak memory if not deleted. So we want to check here if there was a specialization after we plus up this damage, if it was required, uh, then we want to delete. This might be a little different than we expect. And basically the short answer is, hey, you should not delete either pointer. It's an undefined behavior to do so. So basically we're kind of deleting the original when we do this. So I was a little mistaken on this delete. Don't delete these dynamic casts because it's going to delete your entire skill tree. Um, I guess that's just the way it's designed. Is this going to be a memory leak? I don't think so, but I don't know. If you've got a sample of something you want to show me about that, or us rather, you can. But now you can see it doesn't error out. Okay, so we did a basic attack. Uh, we leveled up. We chose the sword spec. We did another attack, this time damage one, accuracy one. Now we get to level up, and let's level up damage. And we got the plus damage. What we want to do next is do another attack. So let's go ahead and do that. And we should see that this one either has more damage or more accuracy based on what we cho choose here. So let's hit damage. And now we see we do two damage. We get another level up, but the program ends at that point because we haven't programmed it. So uh, we've got tier one sorted out there. Uh, based on this example, you should be able to fill out uh, how this next tier works. I'm out of time for this video. But basically, you want to do a very similar thing as this case, except rather plus damage or plus accuracy. They're going to automatically gain power attack or automatically gain stable strike. Because if their tier one was previously plus damage and they have another point, it's automatically going to go into power attack because there's nothing else. Um, I guess I could do that. I'll just do it real quick. Let's not be too lazy here. So we basically just want an if here. If uh, tier one is uh, the plus damage, then uh, tier two is definitely going to be power attack. Make sure you get your equal signs right. And we'll do an else if tier one. And I'm rather than just doing else, I am doing the else if because if somehow they got here with unspent, we want to make sure that's defined. Although logically impossible, um, but it's not hurting anything. Might be a little less efficient, but likely optimized away in a release build anyway. So there we go. So if they previously chose accuracy, then they're going to get the other one, which is stable strike. And that'll be that. There's not even a prompt or anything. But we do need to consider now when you attack, you could you could choose power attack or stable strike. So you basically need to work that into here rather than just plain old sword attack and damage and accuracy. It's like now you have an option. Do you want to do power attack or do you want to do your special strike? You know, you're going to have one or the other. You're not both. So you... Rather than just straight going to this attack, you're just going to need more options. You're basically going to need a basic attack, and then you're going to need uh, the other special attack of one of these others. And if you choose one of these others, you might want to put it on cooldown and say you can't choose it twice in a row. You can only attack every other time or something like that. 
So the logic continues. And now you can see how tier, this last tier level up would go. If they're going down the damage side, they're going to have to choose one of one of these two. So you want to prompt one of these two. A uh, similar prompt to this. Just need to make sure they're on the power side. And same with over here. If they're on the accuracy side, you want to prompt one of these two. And then you need to adjust accordingly for your abilities based on those chosen skills. So I'm going to leave that to someone else to fill out the rest. Sure, I could do it, but it's basically kind of repeating what we've already done. Um, but yeah, this is the reality of skill trees. You basically do kind of a cascade of options based on the previous chosen things, and you need to carefully analyze what you're, how you're doing it. So this is a very brute force way right here, but it'll get the job done. There might be better ways with some sort of state machine or... I don't know, I'm trying to think of a good way, or maybe some sort of, there might be some pattern you could work into this uh, that would that would do well. But if it were me, I'd probably, you know, in this small case here, I kind of like the brute force method because it's, it's very easy to read. It's very easy to reason about because it's really only got one option based on what you've previously done. So in, in a way, it is a state machine. It just gets to look a little messy. Um, mainly for me, it's the CN and Couts that start to look messy. So... In your real thing, you're probably going to have this abstracted into another class that doesn't have all this console in and console out. I hope that makes sense. I'm going to go ahead and push this code and leave a link, and you can let me know your thoughts below. Let me know what you think of this skill tree. also just want to point out here that I have this program I wrote when I was in school called DM Power, um, and it basically uses a ton of stuff like this. Uh, there's, there's a ton of these little logic trees of, of different cascades going. Um, it's basically a 5th edition D&D character generator type thing. But it's got tons of this stuff built in. So this is where I got a lot of my initial practice was just figuring out how to do this. Because, you know, based on this, based on what race you are, what class you are, what level you are, what specializations you've chosen, you get a lot of different options. And that's all programmed in here. So I've been, I've been through the weeds many times on this sort of stuff. So if you want to see like a full working example of this kind of stuff, I've got one right here in this uh, public repo. 1,700 lines of, of code of, of working out logic of different choices of stuff. Um, and that's, that's only for campaign. There's also, you know, characters, a lot of stuff about updating, a lot of stuff about leveling up, gen generating rewards, all sorts of stuff, all the different race options. It's all in here. So... You know, if you really want to see a really kind of more complete, robust example, or maybe just how to make a 5th edition character generator and maintainer, check out this repo. I use it all the time when I'm playing Dungeons & Dragons. It's, it's just super handy for uh, preparing and running games and maintaining PCs and stuff like that and coming up with loot. It uh, does a lot of it for you and just the console. But, you know, it's kind of a similar thing as to what we're doing here or getting started with. However, I don't use any dynamic casts in that, so uh, you won't see anything like this. But I probably could have saved quite a few lines of code if I did use dynamic casts, but then again, it would also be a little bit slower. So, you know, based on what options you choose, you're going to have some advantages and disadvantages. But I uh, hope you've enjoyed this example and have maybe learned something. And I'll see you guys on the next episode. Peace out.